Hello everyone. Welcome to our web design training videos. In our first lesson, we will talk about the introduction to HTML and the use of tags in HTML. Now we can start our lesson. Let's start our lesson by saying, first of all, what is web design? Web design consists of the basic infrastructure that you will create for your websites or web pages that you will prepare over the internet. When we say web design, HTML comes to mind first. So what is HTML? Let's talk about it. For HTML, version 5.2 is used today. We will make a web design that works with extensions with you. What kind of web design? We will start designing our HTML web page by changing the extensions from the notebook that we will use on our computer. For HTML, we can basically say the following. We can think of it as the basis of coding, that is, the skeleton of a construction that is actually under construction. We will provide transitions from other programs and other languages on HTML. But in its basic sense, we can define HTML as a markup language. So how do we start our coding? By right-clicking on the home screen of our computer, we open a folder from the new option. Let's name our folder test, or it can stay with the new folder name. Let's right-click inside, open a text document from the new option. The text document does not appear to have any extensions, as you can see on my computer. Let's start with what extension means. Extensions, we can emphasize files and applications in computer systems depending on certain programs or operating systems as a surname or abbreviations that emphasize what it does. For example, the extension of an image file on our computer is JPEG. We observe that a video extension is MP4. How do we open these extensions on our computer? Let's start with it. First, we clicked on our computer icon. Click on the options on the right from the view address at the top. Then, a menu will appear in front of us from the change folder and search options section. Inside this menu, we will click on view again. And for known file extensions, we deselect the hide extensions option. We have opened our extensions with the apply option. So how do we see our extensions? So whether extensions are turned on or not, we are looking at our folder option named new. We see that the extension of our new text document that we have opened is txt. So how do we change the txt extension? The extension must be html or htm in order to enter html with the right click and rename option. We're changing the extension right now. The important thing here is that you can change the name of your file. But if you want to open an HTML file, we must add a .html. Let's start our lesson by typing index.html. I said enter. A warning panel has come up to be able to change extensions. We approve of it. And whichever default browser is on our computer, the default browser in the icon you see in our folder has also changed. We can start our coding by right-clicking on the Open with option and opening the notepad. I just opened my page. Let's create our notebook extensively. How do we start coding HTML first in our notebook? Let's start with it. How to encode HTML? Let's pay attention to the points that we need to highlight them. To make HTML coding, to start a coding with HTML, we will make use of the less than and greater than symbols. We will place our expressions and labels inside the less than greater than icon. How do we start? Less than icon. Then we will write the name of our label. Then we close. In the space between, we write the lines of code that we actually want to emphasize. And finally, we will have closed on the right. Let's reinforce it with an example. We come to our notebook. After opening my less than icon, I typed my HTML expression. I closed it with the greater than icon. I'm leaving some space. Then I opened it again with the smaller icon and closed it with slash and closed my HTML tag. As in every language, our start and end tags are highlighted as HTML in HTML markup language. The tag we will use in the second step is the head tag. Likewise, we have a tag to open and close. I close it with the slash statement. I'm going to the bottom line. Let's also take a look at our body tag. 
A little further down I'll close our body tag. So what are these tags? Let's highlight it now. Our head tag means head. It is the area where the codes that the programmer will use in the background are written. The body tag, on the other hand, is the area you want to see on the screen, where you will add more images and create content. We can also refer to its Turkish name as the body. Well, after writing these, we have one more tag left. That's the title. Let's highlight what it does. Let's run our web page here. I'm saving with Ctrl plus S, or you can save with the Save from File option. I turned it off. Let's take a look at its appearance. We clicked on the new folder. Click on index.html. As you can see right now, our page is empty. So how do we fill our page? Or what do we need to do for anything to appear in it? Right click on index.html. After saying open with, I click on notepad again. Here, let's write an expression in the range of the body tag. We wrote Kanya. We recorded. When I update my page, you can see that my Kanya expression is displayed in my web browser. Let's talk about our title tag right away. Our title tag should be written in the head tag range. Its job is actually to change the name of the tab. How will we use it? A resealable label. We opened the title. I'm leaving some space. Again I closed my small slash title tag. Currently on the left side, the tab's name appears as index.html, as you can see in my web browser. Thanks to the value we will give the title, we will change the name there. I've come to the interval where our title tag opens and closes. I'm writing Kanya. I recorded. You can press Ctrl plus S or save from file. I updated my page. Currently, the name of my web page has changed to Kanya. The plane you see now is the classic templates that you can create completely HTML in web design. How will we use this template? Every time you try to do HTML coding, you have to open the template in the same way. In some cases, you can observe the working status in exceptional cases. However, when you want to add the HTML in the future, it is possible to encounter an error in the areas where you go out of the template. That's why I recommend using the template as it is. Notepad is not preferred much nowadays because they don't have any features that we call auto-completion or shortcuts to make our work easier. Text editors have been developed instead. Several text editors are currently in popular use today. Sublime Text is the first of these, and then many text editors such as Atom and Notepad are created. We will use the Sublime Text Editor throughout our lesson with you. Let's download the Sublime Text Editor to our computer now. I'm closing our files. I just got my web browser. We will download the Sublime Text Editor from its site. Yes, we have reached the site now. As you can see at the top, it says Download for Windows. I clicked on it. The download has started in the lower left corner. We'll wait a while during this process. It's not a very heavy program. It will quickly be installed on your computer. Once the download is complete, click on it, and you can start running your file. I say yes. Yes, let's include the features. We confirmed the installation. We have reached Sublime Text from the search engine of my computer. Let's close these installation files as well. As you can see, it is a text editor with an English infrastructure. Since 90% of the text editors are already in English, don't bother changing it. In the coding area that we see on the screen right now, any of our files are not active. You can use the Ctrl plus N key to open a new file, or you can say File New File in the upper left corner. 
After you open our new file, the extension of your file is still not changed to HTML, so it is not possible for it to benefit from auto-completion of an action you have made on it. So you need a file with HTML extension. You can drag the index.html in the new folder we opened on the desktop and drop it into the sublime text. Currently, our page is working fine in index.html. In this, we will talk about text editing tags with you. How to use text editing tags, or what differences will the tags that we project onto our computer have? Let's take a look at it. First of all, we wrote Kanya to try out with you. We recorded. In our web browser, we only observed Kanya with its default value in the upper left corner. Let's open it again. Let's put it to the left like this. Kanya expression, such as bold italic, underlined, colored. How should it be written? So how should this be arranged in coding? Let's take a look at it. I clicked inside our folder on the left. We can see the expression Kanya in the index HTML. How do we edit this expression with bold italic underline? We will talk about it. We are currently talking about text editing tags. One of the sublime text features, by the way, is autocomplete. By autocompletion, we mean that after typing any phrase or tag, when you press the tab button, it can automatically open and close the tag for you from the examples below. Now we will talk about the B label. I wrote the Kanya statement and recorded it. I update my page after saving. Right next to it, we can observe the bolded version of the expression. Let's take advantage of the strong tag, which will do the same thing again. Let's start strong now. Again, I wrote my Kanya statement. I recorded. It will also be bold. You can see that the words are aligned side by side. Our label that will allow them to be aligned one under the other is the BR label. It will make it go to the next line. It will act as enter. We will write our BR tag at the end of the line. And our BR tag is our first unclosed tag. I save them after I write them all. Let's get the update on my page right away. Let's add it here as well. We recorded. All three of our expressions were previewed one after the other. We will immediately use our i tag for italics. We also wrote our i tag. I am writing again in Kanya. We added BR. Let's update. Slightly obliquely, as you have seen. We will use the U tag to make it underlined. Let's add a BR there too. In this way, we can make edits such as bold, underlined italic on the text. In other words, we will do all the operations we will do in the same way, using the tags. Here our second important tag that we will use inside the text editing tags is the font tag. The font tag will allow us to color the text, add size and also change the font. Let's start our process right away with the font tag. Our font tag is a tag that can be opened and closed in the same way. We are emphasizing our Kanya expression again. The important thing in the font tag is the parameters. We will work with parameters as well as tags in HTML. What are parameters and how are they used? Let's talk about it. We come to the part where it opens inside the font tag and leave a space. We will write three parameters in it. I continue after the equal symbol and I will leave a space between the parameters. I wrote a face. Again, equals in quotation marks. Finally, we write you the tag, sorry, we write the parameter. In the same way, we have placed all three of them inside the font label. As the name suggests, we will decorate the font with color and color face. We will arrange the size with you as well. Here we need to use English colors, and we need to write the English versions of the font. This is the important point here. For color, let's make the color red, let it be red. Let's use the Face Calibri font. 
The important thing is that it can take a value between 1 and 7, so its minimum value will be 1. Its maximum value can be 7. Let's say 7. Let's give it a try. I saved it with Ctrl plus S. Let's add a few BR here. Let there be some space between them. The more BR we add, the more spaces there will be. A little further down on my page, we can observe that the expression Kanya appears in a larger font, in color, and in a different font. We can try with a few more examples. Again, we opened our font tag. Let's write the features inside. You do not have to use all the parameters at the same time. There are three parameters you can use in it. You can use one too. You can use all of them. Let's write a comic. Let it be blue. Let its size be 1. Let's leave some space. I am updating my page again. On the lower side, we can observe that the expression Comec is different in color, with a smaller font. Finally, we will talk about title tags and text editing tags. Header tags are also known as HX tags. What does it do? Let's talk about it first. We will not need to use these tags that we used in the title tags at the beginning. When you type them, you will see that it automatically redirects to a lower line. Heading tags start from the H1 tag and continue to the H6 tag. Let's highlight them now. All of them are effects that can be turned on and off. I started with the H1 tag. Let's emphasize the word Kanya again. Notice I don't put BR. I have approved the H2 tag. Let's write the same again. I say H4. Let's open our H6 tag. Contrary to what is expected here, the H1 tag will write the largest value in points. The H6 tag will print smaller. Let's save it and have a look at it. I leave a space between it and the font tag. After saving, I can update my web browser. As you can see we can see that the size of the H1 tag is larger and the H6 size is smaller. We see that it can redirect to a subline without using the BR tag. These are also properties of title tags. Here we have one parameter inside the title tags, that is, inside the HX tags. Let's talk about it right away. A line parameter is equal after typing a line in the same way, we will use quotation marks. We always pay attention to symbols in a parameter variant. You may encounter an error. It can take three values in it, left, right, and center. In other words, we will use it in cases such as align left, align right, or center. We can currently set it right, or in the middle, as our web browser's default value is left aligned. Let's try center at the beginning. Center the word. I recorded. I'm updating my web browser. You can see it now appears centered in my web browser. Let's try it in the H2 tag as well. I wrote a line. After I say equals, I say right. I recorded it again. When I update it, we can see that it is placed on the right of the page in the web browser. In text editing tags or HTML in web design, we have one rule regarding the use of tags. This rule is about, for example, in order to make a word bold, italicized and underlined at the same time, or to emphasize one of the font HX tags on the same word, we need to understand the nesting logic. How do we use this nested logic? Let's explain with an example. Let our word be Kanya again. Let's leave some space. We will try to make our word Kanya both bold, italicized and underlined. Initially I open the B tag. Then I open the I tag. And finally I open the U tag. When closing, we will be careful to close the first open tag with the last one, 
and the last open tag with the first one. So there will be a reflection. First of all, I'm closing the U tag. I then close the I tag. And finally, I will close the B tag. After saving, I should be able to observe that the expression Kanya is both bold and italicized and underlined. After saving, I look in my web browser. Don't forget to update your page again. At the bottom, it is possible to observe that our Kanya expression is both bold, italicized and underlined. Let's try to colorize the same expression with the font tag. I'm back to the Sublime Text Editor again. Finally, let's open the font tag. Let's call it color. Let it be orange. Let's size up now. Let it be 7. And let's change the font. Let's call it Calibri. Since I opened the font tag here at the end, I'll have to close it first. So right in front of the U tag. I'm closing it the same way. I recorded. I'm back on the screen. In that. Our color is orange, underlined in bold italic. We can observe our text with the features of the font tags highlighted. Again, let's take it from the beginning. Let's emphasize that we need to start and close the HTML tag with HTML at the beginning. We use the head tag in the second stage, and we only use the title tag inside the head tag. I would like to emphasize again that the title tag is the title tag and change the name of the tab. Then let's emphasize again that we have written all our features in the body tag in the future, such as adding images, adding videos, or using our content completely between the body tag. If we move on to the text editing tags, let's emphasize that the B tag is bold, and our strong tag also bolds our word. Let's emphasize that the U tag is underlined and the I tag is italicized giving the word a slight italic value. For the BR label, the important point is, the BR tag acts as the enter key. Yes, but without having to do any closure on the BR tag, let's emphasize that the tag is a tag we use. Finally, let's emphasize again that the HX tags continue from H1 to H6 in the text editing tags, the H1 tag writes the largest value, and the H6 tag writes the smallest value. We used three parameters in our font tag, face size and color. Let's repeat our lesson again in terms of font size and font. If we talk about the font tag, let's not forget that the font tag is a tag that can be opened and closed, and there are three parameters in it. The parameters in it are face size and color parameters. We would define the font with face and the size with size and the color with color. I would like to remind you again that you will take the maximum value of 7. There is a small part left to talk about colors. As you can see about this part, we have a table like this. Using the hashtag sign, we can also colorize with numerical expressions. We will colorize with values between 0 and 255 in a way that the computer can understand. How do we do this? We will have colors that will take the minimum 00, zero maximum FF value. If we think as if we have a palette in our hands, we will code the values of the red for the first two parts, the green for the next, and the values for the blue for the last, in that interval between 0 and F, with numerical evaluations. Let us show you with an example. Let's leave a gap. Let's open our font tag below. Then let's write our colors inside. Let's add our other parameters. Yes, let you be 7. Let the face be Arial Black. And after we put the hashtag sign in its color, it will be neater if we call the first two lines as the first two fields. For example, let's say 45. Let's call the next one FF, so get the green part exactly. And in the last part, I say 50. We will create a different color in the middle, as if we had a palette in our hands, as if we were choosing the colors ourselves. I clicked right away. Let's see. 
How do we create a color in index.html? Let's add the expression. We wrote Kanya. We recorded. Let's open our page again. On the lower side, we have created a color with a high density of green. Thanks to the font tag, we have shown that we can colorize with numerical expressions with the color parameter. We have come to the end of our lesson. Hello everyone. Welcome to our web design training videos. In this lesson, we will talk about linking, using frameworks, and using tables. Let's start. First of all, I start by opening the Sublime Text program. I will start my process by opening an HTML file inside the Sublime Text. We will try to create a new web page with Ctrl and keys. Then I start my process by saving it with Ctrl S and changing the extension. Let's create a web page called index.html on the desktop. Save it. We are in index.html. I'm checking. Let's run index.html. We can start our process with Sublime Text on the right and Web Browser on the left. With the automatic feature of Sublime Test, you can automatically save the template with the help of the tap button after typing HTML on your screen. First of all, I would like to talk about two issues. The HTML accent you see at the top highlights that this version belongs to HTML5. The expression meta charset UTF-8 at the bottom indicates that you will not encounter any errors when you use Turkish characters in this web page. Here we will start our process by entering the body. We start without creating a link. Let's start by taking some notes. Creating links in HTML is used in two ways. It will be divided into two as in-page linking and off-page linking. Here we will first start without creating off-page linking. If you are going to link to a different web page, YouTube video, or any other address, you will use an off-page link. If you are going to perform a top-down or bottom-up operation inside your page, you will use an in-page link. The general tag for link building is the A tag. After opening tag A, we leave a little space and then close it. The most important parameter in the A tag is the ref parameter. With the ref parameter, we can control where we can redirect and where we create a link. First, let's create a link to an HTML file. Before copying our link address, I right-click to go to the file in the range of a tags. I recorded. I will create a link to the lecture.html file on my computer. I moved it to the desktop as well. By typing lesson.html in the ref, I have created a link to my HTML file. I saved it with Ctrl S. I'll check it by running it. Let's create a space here. Yes, we recorded it. We can see the phrase click to go to the file just below the link creation. We can all see that the color is blue and underlined on any text you add a link to here. When we click, we can see that it redirects us to our other course.html page. With our browser, we can go back to the main page with the back button on the left. The important point here is that when you click on the file or link, you should be able to see the color change. A link that has never been clicked appears in blue, and after clicking it turns purple. Here we can link another page, or a web page to the website. Let's open in a tag again. Yes. Let's connect to a website over the internet from here.
Yes. I am copying the link address of Konya Metropolitan Municipality at the top. I return to my page. I pasted it between quotation marks inside the ref parameter. Let's write Konya Metropolitan Municipality here between the A labels. I add BR between A tags. I recorded. I return to the page again. I updated the page. We can see the expression Konya Metropolitan Municipality. When we click it, it directs us to the Konya Metropolitan Municipality address. If you have noticed, all of them are opened in the same tab. If you want to redirect to a different tab, you can also use a parameter here. We always need to leave a space between parameters. In order not to encounter an error, we will use the target parameter. With the target parameter, if you want our transaction to be opened in a different tab, or the website to be opened in a different tab, we use our parameter that will redirect to a different tab, which we call underscore blank. After saving, I return to the screen. I updated the page. When I click on Konya Metropolitan Municipality, we can see that the municipality opens its website in a different tab. Link building is not just for websites and HTML files. We can add any PDF file, any MP4 file, or in zip or RAR files. Let's continue with one example. Let's add a PDF file together. I'm getting a PDF file from my desktop. Yes, a.pdf is the name of the file. Again I added a BR below, I open tag A. Then I will continue by typing the name and extension of the file in the ref. My file name is a.pdf. After typing, Let's write the PDF here as well. Or write a PDF file like this. I recorded. I switched back to the web browser. I updated my page. The phrase PDF file appears in blue and underlined. I clicked on it. It directed me to the PDF. As you can see on the right, you can also download from here. I steered left again. If I want the PDF to open in a different tab, we will add the target tag inside the quotation marks here. I recorded. We're looking again. I have added my PDF file in a different area to my web page. It is possible for us to create a link to any domain on the image or to another address to a PDF file, zip file, RAR file. Now let's try the in-page link. In order for the in-page link to work actively, there should be as long a content area as possible in the page range. Because you need a long space to be able to realize that you are redirecting downwards or upwards in the page. I will add quite a lot of BR inside the page. Let's expand the space a little bit. Yes, say it. I'm adding a few BRs. Here, we will provide a different use in ref, since the difference in the in-page link is within the same page. How will it be used? At the very beginning, I go right above create link. When we click on the body or on the text, we will make it redirect us to the bottom of the page or to the top when we click the bottom. Again I start with a ref. Let's write in page link here. I will use the a tag again with the ref parameter. I turned it off. I also close my a tag just to the right of the in page link. The important thing here is the hash mark. With the hash sign, we need to emphasize that we are linking within the same page. We take care not to use Turkish characters in ref. Here we need to specify any expression after putting the hash sign. I will write the name. I recorded. 
Then I come to the bottom of the page. We put the BR statement too much for that. We are here again. Here we will create a name expression. Name is a parameter. In order to be able to highlight our link more clearly within the same page, we ensure that the top side meets our label, which we direct with a ref below. Again, we will close our parameter that we created with a name. I recorded. Whatever the name you created next to the sharp sign, we emphasize the same on the bottom, which does not contain Turkish characters. Let's leave a space after typing name. Let's write an in-page link here again. Yes, I recorded it. After saving with Ctrl S, I returned to my page. I updated the page. There is an expression to create an in-page link that I have highlighted below. When I clicked on the in-page link at the top, it directed me to the statement of creating an in-page link below. If we want to do the opposite, a ref should be at the bottom of the page and a name at the top of the page. Again, you can support it with icons or pictures. Let's try the opposite. I'm deleting this. Let's write an in-page link here. Let's change our parameter right here. Let's put a hash sign at the beginning. I'm also replacing the top one. I deleted the hash sign. We also wrote create a connection here. I recorded. I returned to the page again. Yes, let's update the page. You can see the text creating an in-page link at the top. But when I scroll down a little bit of the page, we see that the phrase in-page link is highlighted in purple and underlined. When we click on it, I see that it redirects us to the phrase create an in-page link. You can do this to an image, video, or any other area of the page you want to highlight. If we move on to the second stage, let's talk about creating a framework. I open a new page with the control and key to create a frame. In order for the Sublime Text Editor to work actively after opening the page, you need to register with control S. Or you can use fail again with save as or save keys. I am recording with control S. Let's go to the desktop. I save the file as .html. Let's create our template now. We wrote the HTML expression. When we press the tap button, our HTML template is completed automatically. Here I would like to mention the purpose of framing. Creating a framework is a process that you can use to transfer a different web page or certain areas of the website to your own page. Although creating a framework has become a bit more passive nowadays, I think it will be useful for you in certain areas. Let's get started. Creating a frame is defined as frame when we say HTML. We will use the frame tag with you more as a frame. We will use it for some tasks such as taking a YouTube video or taking a Google map location to get a location. Let's try it now. I open the frame and immediately the frame tag. After typing the frame, you press the tap button, it will be completed automatically. We wrote. Here are the tags that can be opened and closed iframe tags. I don't need to define any expression in the range. I'll just choose which address I want to be displayed on my page. Let's save it with Ctrl S. We need to choose any website. Let's take a look at the website of Konya Metropolitan Municipality.
After opening the website of Konya Metropolitan Municipality, I get the immediate extension at the top. This is how I pulled it down. I recorded. Here we can use the width and height parameters to determine the dimensions of the frame. We will use it with width and height. Let's show them right now. Again, we will write it as a parameter. Width will be width. Height will be height. You need to write a numerical value according to how wide or how high you want your page to be inside. For example, we can say 400 and 600. I recorded. I'm going to get a preview of my page right now. Let's move this to the right. Yes. At the moment, we have created a frame of the Konya Metropolitan Municipality in our own web page with dimensions of 400 and 800. After we create a frame in any area of your page, we can add other features to the left or right or to the surrounding areas. But it will be more practical for you to use the frame tag as left aligned or right aligned like this. I would like to talk about making a video about the frame and about the location. I'm going downstairs right now. You can leave some space, or we have an expression that we can define as a comment line or a comment line. We will make the line transition from fully active to passive. After putting less than we add exclamation and dash symbols. Then, at the point where the iframe tag is closed, we have made that line completely inactive with two dash symbols, dash expressions and greater than symbol. I saved it with Ctrl S. Even though I have added the frame to the page, I have disabled it. I am going down. Let's add a video to YouTube with a frame. I opened the iframe tag again. I complete it with the tap button. I will add a video here. Here we will continue by adding a YouTube video to the SRC parameter in the SRC field. Let's find a video right here. Yes, we got our video. Let's copy the link from the top. I pasted it into the SRC field. Again, as we did above, you can complete the size of your video with the width and height parameters. Let's continue by reducing the size a little bit. Width and height parameters. Let its width be 250 and its height be 200. We recorded. Let's open our page again. As the default value of the web browser on our computer, we can see our YouTube video actively in the upper left corner. After adding the comment line, we will try to add a YouTube video within a frame. First of all, I want you to enter YouTube from our web browser and select a video. Then you will see the share button just below the YouTube video. When we click on the share button, the embed icon will appear at the top. We will have added a video to our HTML page with the embed icon and a frame tags. When you click on the video, you will see the iframe with all its features on the right with the copy option at the bottom. I clicked on copy. I am returning to my page again. I will place it on my page with Ctrl V. Here you will see some CSS codes. But you can use width and height and SRC parameters in HTML up to the point we show. I saved it with Ctrl S. Let's take a look at my web browser. I just entered the file. On the upper left, we can see our YouTube video with its dimensions. There are areas on which you can play or mute. The areas on the right where you can expand the screen. The YouTube interface are completely located in your web browser. We can do the same with Google Maps. Let's try adding a location to your page. I'm going back to Sublime Text. I'll add BR because I want some distance between them. I recorded. I'm back in my web browser. 
we go to Google Maps. We will add a location. After opening Google Maps, you can enter any address. Or you can add the Google Maps interface completely to your web browser without entering any address. For this we will immediately click on the menu. There is a share or place a map section at the bottom of the menu. We will use this option when we place any map inside my web browser. I click. In the menu that opens, we will refer to the map placement part again. Here we can choose the size at the bottom, small, medium, large and custom size. Let's choose a small size. Then we have the option to copy the HTML as in YouTube. HTML, I clicked copy. I'm going back to Sublime Text right away. I placed it with Ctrl V. Again, we see certain CSS codes here, but at the top we have only the SRC parameter that belongs to the HTML. I saved it with Ctrl S. Let's have a quick preview. We have added a few BRs in our page. The location is located just below our YouTube video. Now that we have finished this, we can move on to the use of tables. I'm closing my page. For table usage, I will open a new page with Ctrl N. We will do the same again. I saved it with Ctrl S. I am attaching a file to the desktop. The extension must be HTML. We recorded. Then, when I type the HTML shortcut and press the tap button, my template is placed. Let's write table usage in title tag. We are inside the body tag. The importance of using tables in HTML dates back to ancient times. Tables have always been used to create the design at the most basic level of HTML. That's why the use of tables is important to us. So how do we do it? As you will be familiar with the name of the table usage, it will be used with the table tag. I leave some space after opening the table tag. Here we are again in the body. We left a space with table. We will create TR for each row and TD for each column. So we will need more than one tag to create a cell. Let's start our process by creating a row. I opened the TR tag. Likewise, I immediately leave some space. Let's shrink the screen a bit. Now we have created a row. We will need to create a column inside the row, so that when combined, it can form a cell for us. I will immediately create a cell with the TD tag inside. Let's create more than one. Here's how I add. At the top I give numerical expressions. I wrote two. Let's create another one. I wrote three. When you want to create more than one line, you can copy and paste the fields in TR from below. You need to make sure you don't go beyond the table tag. Let's change the numeric expressions. Yes, we create three rows. I recorded. Of course, when you save these features in the table and redirect them to the screen, you will not see much different elements. Only numerical expressions appear. At the moment, we are not able to place the table exactly. We will use parameters for that. Let's see what parameters we have. First of all, we have a border parameter so that the borders of the table can be seen completely. The border default value usually ranges from 0 to 1. If you want it not to appear, you must write zero. But if you want to have a small sign, you can write one. Of course, this is not a limitation. Higher values can also be given. I recorded. Let's look at our table again. Our table looks like this. In this, not only the border parameter, we can set the width and height in the same way with width. 
Let's write 300 for its width. Let's write 200 for its height. Apart from that, if you want to give your table any background, we can give it the background color with color. I chose yellow. I'm recording. I'm back again. Let's shrink our screen a little. Now we have changed the background color of our table. We have changed the dimensions in our table. We have added a border with border. However, we can give each parameter we use, either in TR or in TD. So you don't need to give the dimensions just inside the border. It can be used in a row or in a column. You can make the sizing any way you want. The most important issue in this is cell merging. You should be able to combine rows horizontally or columns vertically. Because HTML is in its basic structure, let's explain with a photo here. We have a photo of how to shape HTML in its basic structure. Let's take a look at it. You may want to be able to create a dash area at the top. There may be a menu on the left. You may want to be able to create a contact area just below. It is not possible to do a styling with HTML without merging cells. Let's continue with our operation. Let's continue by centering our table here. Let's bring our web browser to full size. It's at 100% right now. It looks like this. I have a table aligned to the upper left corner. We will use the center tag to center it. You may have heard of the center parameter, but we are saying the center tag for the first time right now. In the center tag, you need to open it at the beginning of the body tag and close it right after the body. This means that all the tags you have written in the body are centered. Now that we have opened a table, we have centered our table. Yes, let's make it a little bigger. Let's move on to the merge process. How do we combine rows or columns? First of all, to be able to combine rows, if we give an example from the table here, in order to merge cell 1 and cell 2, there will need to be a call span value in both. Let's have a quick look. How are we going to do? I came to TD. It's a parameter, I say it again. We wrote the call span value. You need to write the numerical value of how many cells you are going to combine in equal quotation marks. I've written two as we're currently merging cells one and two. If you leave it like this after doing this, it will give an error. Let's take a quick look at his self-monitoring. Our table is registered as you can see. Yes, it created width but there was a shift in the table. To fix this, you need to delete the cell you merged. So if I want to merge the second cell, I will have to delete the second cell and the TD. I saved it after deleting it. Let's have a look again. In this way, we have combined the first and second areas. Now let's show the same in vertical join. Let's combine cells six and nine. We will use the row span parameter this time as there will be a vertical merge in the same way. I wrote 2 because I will combine 2 cells again. Since it will merge with 9, let's delete 9 right here. I recorded. I'm looking for a preview. Now I have merged the cell into a vertical space. You can combine these types of operations completely. You can use it to create a menu area completely vertically. Let's give one last example again. Let's complete our process with an example by using 4 and 5, 7 and 8. Let's write call span value to horizontally combine 4 and 5 like this. Again, we will do two merges. I'm deleting 5. I recorded. We have made an automatic merge into the area where 4 is located. Here, you can use a line center to center the texts, numbers or pictures inside the cells. In order to be able to perform an average operation inside the cells. Let's put it inside the line. I came inside the TR tag. I chose it with a line center. I have centered the texts in the line as follows let's be there. Whichever row you give this value, you will have done the averaging on all of them. Let's paste the align center and the others. I saved it. I am updating the table. 
You can also use border width height parameters or color parameters in TR tags or TD tags. We have come to the end of our lesson, see you soon. Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will talk about listing tags and form objects. First of all, we start our process by opening a new file from the Sublime Text Editor. Now I am opening a new page with Ctrl and key, and I will save with Ctrl S. I continue my process by opening a file called index.html on the desktop. We recorded. In the second stage, I created my template with the HTML shortcut, the tap key. I have embedded the HTML canonical tags on my web page. Inside the body, we'll highlight listing tags at the start. Listing tags are divided into two as ordered list and unordered list. How is it used? What are our nested tags? Let's start by talking about them. First of all, our ordered list tag is OL tag. The OL tag is a tag that can be opened and closed. It is necessary to create a Lee again for each list element inside our OL tags that we open and close. We have now created an ordered list. We can take a little note here too. With the description line, let's close it like this. We will turn Lee tags on and off for each list item inside the OL tags. First of all, Let's write Kanyo1 here. Then I open the Lee tag in the same way. Let's write Kanyo2 here. Then we write 3. Let's create another one again and preview our list. We have now edited the content of our OL tag. As you can see, we open and close our Lee tags. We are emphasizing whatever the name on our list will be in the range. We closed. Let's have a quick look at our page. In index.html, we have created our first ordered list, which continues as 1, 2, 3, 4 at its default value on the top left. In our ordered list, our default value continues as numeric because it is a numeric expression. In order to change this, we need to use the type parameter. How does the type parameter work? Let's see. We open our type parameter inside OL. If you want it to continue with a different list, for example, not 1, 2, 3, 4, you may want it to continue as A, B, C, D. I type A, save with Ctrl S. I also update my web browser. It continues as A, B, C, D now. Or let's see if there is case insensitivity. When you write the capital A statement, it will continue as capital A capital B capital C. In other words, if you specify the type in the type tag, our ordered list will continue in that way. So how do unordered lists work? A little down. Let's take it as an unordered list again. The main feature to be emphasized in the unordered list is as follows. No rank, 1, 2, 3, 4, or like A, B, C, D. There are symbolic expressions at the beginning. We will use our alt tag for this. Let's get that down a bit. After opening the alt tag, it is also a listing element. We will need to open a Lee tag on each element. Here, let's emphasize again as Kanya 1, Kanya 2. Let Kanya be 3, and let Kanya be 4. Yes, let's record. Let's take a look at his image. Now we see an image on the left as a solid circle. We can also change the filled circle with the type parameter. There are English terms for this. Let's give an example of one. We placed our type tag, type parameter, inside the alt tag. After saying equals, I write my value in quotes. 
I saved and updated. We have previewed it as a hollow circle. We will use listing tags and menus in the future because listing tags will form the infrastructure of our menus. Dropdowns, horizontal menus, vertical menus, will use listing tags for all of them. So, when you want to create a menu normally, or when you want to create a drop-down menu, how do we proceed? Let's give them an example. The homepage about us, inside the old tag that we wrote at the top. Yes, I saved and updated. Let's emphasize the gallery and communication. We recorded it. I'm updating. This is how we created the beginning of our menu. If we want to create a drop-down menu inside the communication menu, of course, these are infrastructures. A little more editing is needed. But how do we proceed when we want to create the infrastructure of a drop-down menu with listing tags? Let's give an example. For example, if we want to add fields such as phone location to the bottom of the communication menu, how are we going to do? We need to leave a space for the lead tag created by the communication field. I'm taking the part where it is closed. I'll take it a little lower. I will try to make a list again inside the lead tag. How can we do that? We need to create an ordered or unordered list again. I add one of the all or ol tags. Let's add the all tag. Yes, we have created the all tag. We need to add the li again in it. Location. We're going to create a li again. Telephone. Let's create a li again. Mail, let's save it. I go back to the page again. Yes, we see the location, phone and mail fields as a submenu under the communication. That's it for our listing tags. It should be noted that they can be used together. Likewise, the inside of the old tag is also nested. Yes, we can use it in the same way. So what are form objects and how are they used? Let's talk about it. I open a new page with Ctrl N. We saved it to the desktop with Ctrl S. I am opening a page with HTML extension. I wrote HTML. I pressed the tap button. Yes. Let's call it form objects inside the title tag. I came down. I refer to it again as form objects. Let's highlight this with the H1 tags. I am centered with the same center again. Yes, we now have a centered form objects text. I'm checking the course HTML again. Yes, I got the image I wanted. What are form objects and how are they used? Let's talk about it. Yes, form objects are files that you have seen in hospitals, schools or public institutions, and most of them are made under the name of a standard form that you may have marked or filled. What kind of tags will we use in HTML for these? What usage is there? Let's talk about it. As you will be familiar with the name, in order to use form tags, we first need to open a form tag at the beginning. We opened our form tag. Again, we see that there is a tag that can be opened and closed. We will make certain adjustments to our form tag. Like what? For example, let's start by talking about parameters. We have an action parameter. Let's add action. Then we have the method parameter. Let's add that too. So what are these? While determining which address to direct the information in the form with action in the form objects, with method, we determine how it can be routed. 
We're not talking about them at the moment, as these two don't have any content. They don't have any inclusion with HTML. It will suffice to emphasize only superficially where and how to send it. In the second stage, how to create a form address, how to create an input entry. Let's see. In the first step, I opened the input. I select it with the type key. The input tag you see is the base tag of the form. We will talk about the type and name parameters in it. The type parameter will determine the type of the input. With name, we will have done what it will do or how to name it. I just came here. I wrote your name just below the form. We put two points. I came into type, I'm writing text. Let the name be the name. We recorded. Let's see what it will look like. As you can see on the left, it is possible to observe your name and the input next to it. You can write any value in it. You can write your name or give their limitations. In this way, we have created our first form. Let's come to stage two. I write your surname. Let's create an input again. This time the type will be text again, let it be a surname. I recorded. Let's see. It continues in the same way as you can see. Yes, here we need to edit it with BR so that it does not continue side by side. I'll add BR right away from the text tag with your name. Yes, then after the input input. We just need to add one. I wrote your surname. I redirected to a bottom line. Let's add two. It was very side by side. We added two. In this way, a gap was created. As you can see, our form bars or input entries do not appear perfectly aligned. In this way, we have incorrect entries or there is a difference in the routing. In order to edit it, we will actually perform our operation with the table. We need to make a spreadsheet. At the beginning, Let's complete the form objects. Password. In step three, I open the input tag again. This time we will type password instead of type. So password. Let's write the name right here without using Turkish characters. What is the difference? Let's add one to it. Yes. As you can see below, we can see that when you type the password, no expression is visible and the password confidentiality is ensured. Let's continue from here. We will fill these text boxes as form objects, but how do we send them or how do we get the form box to be cleared? How do we reset? We need to talk a little bit about it. We have two features for this. We will create two buttons. One of them will be submit. Let's talk about it right now. Scrolling down, I'll add some extra BR. Yes, we went down, we open the input. Type will be submit this time. Let's write name and value. Let's emphasize that there is a submit button. Let's emphasize that it is sent to our other parameter in the same way. At the same time we write the other that will appear here, the other that will appear on the screen. Here's how I recorded it. Yes, after adding the send button, let's add a reset button. Again, we will use our input tag. We open our input tag. Then we will write the reset statement instead of type. Let's change its value again. Let's set our value to reset. Let's write the same thing here. I saved it and I'll preview it on my page. Here's our reset statement right next to it. Let's change its lowercase letters immediately. Let's capitalize it. Here's how I recorded it. 
Well, let's try it once. When we say reset in step 2, we can see that it clears all form objects. Let's talk about radio buttons and checkbox. For these, we need to be inside the form tags again. We will definitely be in the area where the form tag is opened and closed. Let's go to the top, since the send and reset buttons will be a little lower. I'm just below the code. Let's add a few more. Yes, I'm typing gender so I can add a radio button later. I came down. The feature of the radio buttons is that only one digit can be selected. Checkbox we will be able to select more than one digit. Let's have a quick look. We provide our input with input. We will write radio instead of type. Let the name be the case. Again, we will use our other expression here. Let's write woman. Let's emphasize the word woman again on the right side. I am going down. I chose. Again we emphasize that there is a radio button. Let the name value be the same again. Here we will write their values differently. Let's be careful not to use Turkish characters. Yes, we saved it with Ctrl S. Let's see how it looks. I updated my page. We see that any of the female or male options are active in the gender expression. So, what is the status of the checkbox? Let's go through the checkbox with a few more spaces again. Yes, from here. I'm going a little lower. We can say your hobbies, because there will be more than one option. I came to the input tag. We are updating the checkbox tag. In the name tag, let's give them a different name value as they will be different from each other. We can even just change the value here. Let's say name is the same, so yes. Let's write music. For example, I write listening to music at the end in the area where the label is closed. I'll add BR because I want them to appear one after the other. Yes, I'm still doing the same. Let name be the case again. Let's enter the value differently. Yes, I mean reading a book. Again we will add a BR. We've updated the status statement. Then let's call it dancing here. Yes, we don't need to put BR on the last one, because there's enough down there. I recorded. I'm just taking a look. I updated my page. Let's add a BR over there too. It slipped. Yes. We're looking again. Listening to music, reading a book, dancing. I can choose all three, or I can continue without selecting any of them. The property of the checkbox tag. Let's try them all again with an example. Let's enter a password. Let's choose gender. Let's reset it. Our form objects work just fine. We have new form objects that come with HTML5. Many concepts were added to these, such as adding files, or adding other color, or date time. Let's give just a few examples. Let's add a BR over there. Yes, we can add a select file field first. It's used a lot now. We immediately confirmed our input value. We will change the type. Let's try the file first. Yes, I recorded it. I take another look at my page. 
We have a menu in the select file area, so that we can choose the file. When we click, you can add any file on the desktop or any file on the computer to this area. Let's add one right away. What file you're currently adding can be viewed just to the right of choose file. Let's give one more example. We chose this. We have confirmed and can view it. When we say reset, an expression may appear as if the file was never selected. Let's show the color again. Yes, we will open it with input again. This time we're going to call it color. We recorded. Let's add another BR in between. Yes, we have a color space. Here we can choose the color we want. In the same way, let's add a time. We can also add it at the top. Yes, just below the password. Let's say your age. Or write your date of birth. Yes, we will do it with input again. This time we will write date, that is, date. Yes, we can see time to the right of your date of birth at the top. Here we can choose any field as we want. I'd like to show editing from here on out. As you can see, none of the form objects we've added are properly aligned. For this, we will take help from the use of tables. So we will use table tags. Yes, a little further down, I'm going to create a new form field at the bottom. But before we create the form field, let's leave a space. We'll go right down to the form over there. We can narrow it down a bit. I recorded. You can create the form inside the table tag or it can be used both ways. First I open a table. Let's start with a width, height or border. Let border be 1. Let's expand. Let it be 500. We can give it a little more height. Let's say 600 or 700. I've come down, TR is row, TD is column. In order to create a cell, we need to open a TD inside each row. Right now I need two cells in each row, because in one of them we will have the phrase your name, and in one we will have an input field. I wrote the first TD your name. I'm going to the second one. I need to add input here. There is a nested tag usage. We opened an input. Let's just leave a gap. We opened an input. First, let's create the text. I recorded. Again, let's call it name. Let's take a look at the screenshot. Saved, I'm going down. Right now, since my table is very wide, your name and input input are a little wider. But it is not so important that we will fix it in the following areas. We need a few more of this line. I copied the whole line. I'm placing it below. In the second part, I will write your surname. Here again it will be type text. Here we write surname. I recorded. Yes, our field has started to narrow gradually. I continue. I will add the same password again. I placed it with Ctrl V. Here I am typing the password. The type will be for the password this time. Let's change the name. We recorded. In this way, we will place all the arrangements in our table in order. I'm adding another line again. Let's add a radio button here too. Let's introduce the concept of gender. It should have two inputs in it. Then I will need to add another input to the TD. I'm changing the type there. Let's change their names. We need to give values immediately.
Let's change it to female, male again. I'm adding it right away. We wrote woman, too, at the end of the input, I edited it as male. I saved it with Ctrl S. I returned to my page again. Now I can see the features I want. It is neatly sorted below. By lowering its height a little more, we can see it more clearly. Let's reduce the width a little more and decrease the height in the same way. I added 400 slash 500. Here's how we see the arrangement. Let's add our buttons to the side below. We open our line again. Yes, I opened the line. I need a single field for submit and for reset. So I will add TD. Since I'm going to make use of two cells, TD, I leave a space and perform the call span. I will merge as many cells as there are. That's how I'll have placed a numeric expression. I wrote 2 TD, leaving a space. I reopened my input tag in it. Type will change this time. It will be for our send button and for our reset button. Let's write down the values now. I write in capital letters. Let's create the other input tag. Yes. Yes there. This time we will say reset. Let's write clear. We write its value. I write in capital letters. This is how I recorded it. I'm back on my page. We can see the preview below. Yes, let's center our buttons in TR immediately. We are centered with the center. Yes, then we can completely remove the border tag of the table tag. I came to the top. I am making border zero. I recorded. We have completely removed it here. Let's get rid of the excess of this area. We can lower the height a little more. Let's do this 300. Let's add a checkbox. Here I open a line again. Another cell. We'll call it your hobbies. Two, we will also add a full checkbox to the field. Two, inside the TD tag. I open a little. There will be multiple input entries here. Let's create the first one now. Let name be the same again. Let's give value. You can also do it with just numeric expressions. You can also do it with small abbreviations. At the end, we just need to write at length what it is about. Again, we need to use BR inside the TD. Because, unfortunately, a bottom line is not passed. I opened the checkbox tag again immediately. Let's change their names. This time we will call it reading a book. Yes, let's add the last input. Here we will also checkbox the type tag. The name tag will be the same. We change its value. Let's write dance here too. Let's check a preview again. We have updated. In this way, thanks to our table, our input entries and texts were aligned regularly. We have come to the end of our lesson. See you soon, goodbye.
Welcome to our web design training videos. We will talk about adding pictures, adding sound and adding videos. Let's start. First of all, I start the process by opening the Sublime Text Editor. When we open the Sublime Text Editor, we will continue with a new file. I said Control N. We continue our process by opening a new file. Let's save our file. Let's create a new file on the desktop. I am creating a new file as course.html. I saved my file. Let's create the HTML draft with the title button. Yes, we created HTML. In the title at the top, I wrote audio, image and video edition. First, we'll start with adding images. We will use the IMG tag to add an image. Let's open the IMG tag right away. The IMG tag is a non-closable tag. We will only use parameters inside the IMG. The important point here is this. It's important for us where the picture is and what its extension is. If you want to be able to display the picture in a centered way, or if you want to design the picture, sound and video features you have added to your page in a centered manner, you must use the center tag. We opened our center tag. IMG, let's close at the end. We're closing the center right here. Then let's take a look at our picture. First of all, you need to make sure that your web page, file and image are in the same area. If your file is on the desktop, your image should also be on the desktop. If your file is in a folder, your image must also be in a folder. Now that we save our file to the desktop, we will import our image to the desktop. Right now I'm choosing one picture from my folder. Let's choose more than one. I took my pictures and placed them on the desktop. Yes, it will be more comfortable for us to give short names to our pictures. The shorter their names are, like APG or JPG, the easier it is to code. Because when the name is long, you may encounter any error in copy-paste. Now I'm starting to work with my first image, 1.jpg. We will write it with the extension. I saved it with Ctrl S. I'm going to take a look at my web page. I'm going back to my website right now. As you can see, my picture is very large right now. So it took up a lot of space. We will use the width and head parameters to set its width. I leave a space right next to our SRC tag, our SRC parameter. I opened the width. How wide is it? For example, let's say we have a width of 250. I'm adjusting the height again. Let our height be 400. I saved it with Ctrl S. I am updating my page. Currently, our image is in the middle of our page as we resize it, since we are editing it centered with center. Let's open it right now. It has been arranged as 250 in width and 400 in height. Let's add another picture right below. I'm opening IMG again. Let's try it with a different size this time. My picture's name is 4.jpg. I got the 4.jpg. Let's change the width. Let it be 300. Let the height be a little lower this time. I recorded. If you don't add BR between pictures, they will appear side by side. That's why I'm adding BR right here. Let's add 2. Saved with Ctrl S. Let's update it. Currently, two images of different sizes appear on my web page, one below the other. The reason why the two of them appear in the middle, be in the center range. It is in the center tag. If we want to create a gallery image here, it's important for us to have equal dimensions when resizing our images one after the other. Let's say 300 pixels or 300 pixels wide. Here, let's call its height 200. I continue by adding a few more pictures. I will attach the pictures on my desktop. Here is one in our folder. Yes, let's delete this from the desktop right here. It should be in the course folder. Let's try to get the AAJPG picture in the lecture folder to our web page. After typing the name of your folder here, 
you need to write the name and extension of your image with src expression. This is how we shaped it. We are trying to get our AAJPEG file in the lecture folder. Let's adjust the width in the same way. Let's adjust the height as well. Again, I add BR at the end. We add another one. Let's take a look at the name of our file. Let the width and height of 14 JPEG be the same. Yes, we wrote it 200 as well. I'm recording right now. Let me take a look at my page now. In the final form, we already had two pictures. Since we brought them all to equal dimensions, it had a more regular appearance. 3. We took our picture from the folder. It works just fine as you can see. I can change the width and height of my images a little more. Let's make it a little wider. Cover our page. We make 500 out of 400 sizes. Yes, I recorded it. Here we will try to add a background. Let's continue our process by adding a color to the background of our page. Here we will use the body to add a color to the background of the whole page. So we will continue by adding a parameter inside the body tag. The name of our parameter is color. We will try to give the background a soft color. Let's give it a color in light green tones. I recorded. I am updating my page again. We've also increased the size of our images a little bit more. And as you can see, we have a gallery image that continues with the BR tags in the same dimensions downwards. By the way, if you don't want it to appear centered, you can disable the center tag at the top. Or if you want to add images to the complete backgrounds of a page, we will use the background parameter. Let's give him an example. Let's remove our color. Let's disable our other tags here. We also closed this. Let's add an image to the background of a whole page. I said background. Here, as in add image, if it is in a folder, after typing the name of the folder, we will write the name and extension of the image in JPEG expression. Or if they are in the same location anywhere, it will be enough to write the name and extension of the image. We can insert the following 14 JPEG file. Let's write 14 JPEG. I am not highlighting the name of the folder as they are both in the same location right now. I went back to my page. I will update my page. And as you can see, I have completely placed it on my page. Here, we can highlight the text color appearing on it with the background tag, again with the color parameter, by changing its color. Let's take note of this below. We also talked about BG color. Let's highlight it. We can then deactivate them and enable them in our gallery below. Yes, we got it from here. I pasted it. Let's do light green over there. Yes, I recorded it. I'm going to disable this. Our background parameter at the top and our gallery at the bottom have been activated. We are now returning to a gallery view again. Let's talk about adding audio and adding video below. When you want to add a video to a page, you will also need your video's name and extension. This can be done in many ways, but we are using these features with HTML5 and the latest version. We will use two tags nested together. If you are going to add video at the beginning, if you are going to add video audio, we will use the auto features. I just wrote my video. I activate it with the tab button. As you can see a tag that can be closed and opened again. Here we will create a search tag in it. We will create a search tag here, not a parameter. After writing our label, I make it selected again with the tap button. We write the name and extension of the SRC parameter in it. 
If our file is in a different folder, after writing the name of the folder, we need to write the name and extension with slash mark. In type we will specify the type. Let's start. First, let's look at our video file. I have a file named AMP4. I put it on the desktop. Yes. Here's how I placed my AMP4 file on the desktop as they are both in the same location. Type video and extension MP4. Highlighting it this way will show us that your videos and audio files can be opened more easily in your web browsers. After doing this process, let's save it and save it when you return to the screen again. You can see a large area below. But we observe that it is not working properly. A black screen appears. Its width and height are also quite high. For this, we need to add a control panel first to be able to play the video. Here we will use control as a parameter, but the parameter will not have any value inside. After adding this, we can also add the width and height parameters to the video. For example, let's say its width is 300. Let's make the height a little lower. Let's give 200 for example. I recorded. I'm updating again. We'll go a little lower. Since it is not in the center at the moment, we can view our video on the left. If we want to view our video in the middle below the pictures and in the size of the pictures, I take my center tag at the top and place it below. After placing the center label, let's arrange its dimensions in the same way. I say 400 over there. I recorded. I'm back again. We didn't add BR, let's add BR now. Yes, it has been edited now. As you can see on the video, the executive panel, sound expansion panels are all there. You can easily run your video on your web page very actively. Let's go a little lower. Let's add sound now. Again, the same features will be valid as in the video. This is how I expanded it. I'll open the source tag inside. Yes. Let's leave a space here. Here we will write the name and extension again. Let's get the audio file from our desktop. Yes, after we open our voice tags, let's get our audio file on our desktop. I took the SES.mp3 file into our folder with Control. I copied it with Control C. I'm pasting it on the desktop. I will immediately put the audio mp3 inside the src parameter. I'm writing audio.mp3, then I edit the type as we did in the video. I also write its type and extension. Yes, I saved it with Ctrl S. I'm back on my page. We didn't add the parameters here, so it won't display properly as well. Let's add our control parameter to the top. Yes, we saved it with Ctrl S again. We have a down parameter. Let's give it a try right now. Our audio works just fine. We can advance or rewind through it. If we don't want to, we can turn the volume down on our page. This is how we made our arrangement. Again, the same features are used in both video or audio tags. Here, when you add the autoplay parameter to it, we will see that it starts on the page automatically. Since they both use the same parameters, with HTML5, we are actually updating the same properties. We can disable this for now. Creating all of the picture, audio and video files we have included in a common interface will always create a more permanent feature on our web page.
We talked about coloring the background with color. Or we talked about adding an image to the background completely in the body. If all this is done inside a tag, it means that it affects the whole page. Again, we added the image with the IMG tag. It is necessary to use the SRC parameter in all three of our features. Finally, if you want to be able to get a redirect to another address when you click on a picture, let's exemplify this in a picture below. We added our picture. I'm recording right now. Let's take another picture in the same way. I got the 4JPEG image from here. We placed it on the desktop. I wrote 4JPEG to my SRC parameter again. Then let's set the width and height immediately. This time it could be a little wider. Let's get a little more, we typed 800. Let's make the height a little lower too. Let's do 150, we can even redirect it to the beginning. This is how I came. I place it just below the body. Let's add a lot of it here. Yes, I think 800 will be fine. At the top, we were using the A tag to create any link inside it without creating an off-page link. Our label A on the left side. I will immediately open ref and close our A label on the right. Yes, we closed it here. Again, let's direct it to the address of Konya Metropolitan Municipality. We get the extension. We immediately place it inside the ref. We placed it with Ctrl V. I'm recording right now. When I click on my 4JPEG file, it will need to connect me to the Konya Metropolitan Municipality address. We reloaded the page. I have arranged the sizes a little differently at the top so that we can see the difference. Let's organize this center. I took the center at the bottom, placed it at the top. I recorded. If the hand symbol appears when you hover over the picture, it means that the connection has been made. It connected us to the Konya Metropolitan Municipality address. In order to add a link to our image, we need to open the A tag on the left and close it on the right. We have come to the end of our lesson. See you later, goodbye.